Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to today's webinar, Using Instagram to Build Your Nail Business. I am Julia from Booksy. I'm your webinar manager and moderator for the day. And our guest speaker and educator today is the one and only Mia Ruby. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to learn like all of the gems that, that you have to tell us today. So um, as people are joining the webinar, as people are getting in, because of course we're right at the top of the hour, we know everyone's working their way into the platform. Will you just start out, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Mia. Um, I am, my online name is Superfly Nails. So that's kind of been part of my identity for the last 10 or so years. Um, I started doing nails when nail art became kind of like this passion for me. Um, I was seeing it everywhere. This was probably, I don't know, maybe like 2009 or something like that. I became totally obsessed with it. I had this brainchild idea that I should go to nail school outside of my day job. I was working a corporate job that was great, you know, don't get me wrong, but I knew in my heart that I was an artist and an entrepreneur. So I decided to take the leap and uh, follow my passion, follow what was in my heart. I mean, that's one of the things that you hear in life is if something speaks to you and you can't stop thinking about it and it motivates you and it feels good when you do it and it's bringing joy to your life and other people's lives, then that's what you should be doing. So I all of a sudden decided that I was gonna get into nail school. I did it, I got my license. Um, I then decided that I was gonna open up a little tiny nail studio and start taking some clients. At first I was just practicing on friends and family and then word got out. Um, I'm in San Francisco by the way. So at that time, there, you know, of course everywhere in the world there's nail salons, but at that particular time in the nail world or the nail art world, there was just not a lot of specialty shops that you could go to. In fact, I don't think that there were really any that you could, you know, find the type of nail art that you were seeing on celebrities and magazines, the, you know, the, the flashy stuff, the intricate, the detailed stuff. There just wasn't a ton of it. So I wanted to create a place where pe people could come and get their make their nail dreams come true. So uh, I think around 2013 is when I decided that I was going to quit my full time job. I was, you know, word of mouth was spreading. And also at that time, that's when I discovered Instagram. By chance, I was invited to Instagram through like just a text link that I think one of my, my school nail school classmates had sent me. She, it was just kind of like a random, like, Hey, so-and-so wants you to join Instagram. And I saw it and was like, I think I've heard of Instagram, but I'm not really sure what it does. What the heck? You know, I just did it. I didn't know. I didn't even really think about it. I signed up for it. And for maybe about, a year or two, I was fumbling around on it and just posting pictures of my dog and, you know, some of the DIY nail stuff I was doing. Then when I started really taking clients at the salon, I started thinking, well, maybe I should put my nails on there too. Like my client nails, the people that I'm working on, this is kind of fun. This is a way to you know, it just made the process more fun. Let's take a picture after, let's upload it. I did that for a while. Uh, I think some people found me that way, maybe just through exploring through Instagram. I was lucky enough to be, I guess you could say I was an early adopter in the nail world to start a, like a really focused nail account. So I have that advantage, but I don't want people to think that just because you haven't been using Instagram for a long time that you can't use it as a really important tool in your toolbox of marketing at this point. It's not too late. It doesn't have to be hard. 
It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to take up too much of your time. I promise you that because I am all about simplicity. I have a lot going on in my life. I have a family. I have a business. I have, I try to have a social life, etc. So I wanted to share with you some of the things that I've done based on my experience and the journey that I've been on in my business and also using Instagram, I wanted to just share a few things that are simple and easy to implement to kind of get the ball rolling for you and make you feel comfortable and like you can do it. Because if I can, I'm not, <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it too. So like I said, I was, uh, yeah, around that 2013 point started using Instagram more to take pictures and post my content. And then that's when I discovered hashtags as well. So I started using some hashtags. I was doing things like nails, nail art, you know, just kind of like generic stuff. And that's when at that point in time, things really started rapidly picking up for me. All of a sudden I was just getting like you know, more and more followers every day. People were, I think, hungry for nail art inspiration, or it was just like, it was kind of new. I mean, it's not a brand new industry. I mean, people have been doing nail art for, you know, a really long time, but this particular style of nail art, um, it was resonating with people. Hashtags had helped me at that point. Uh, I know now that Instagram has changed. There's no denying that you don't just get your, I used to, my, our posts used to get seen by everybody that was following you. It was chronological. It was um, a little bit easier just to see what you wanted to see. It was easier to be found really too. So it's changed. And I know that it's, you know, it's harder to get noticed. It's harder to stand out from the crowd, but I don't think that, having you know a lot of people want to get on instagram and think they need to have thousands and thousands of followers that they need to um be super popular or become an influencer or something like that personally i got lucky it helped me take my business to the next level to the point where now i don't see new customers i've built up my business you know we've grown but right now i think what you can do if you're you know taking less of the focus off of i need you know thousands and thousands of followers i need more i need you know this and that focus on using it to build if you're not if you're at that point and i don't know how many of you are if you're fully booked or not but i think what i what from what i feel is that um a lot of you out there maybe just want to use this tool or utilize it to become booked, busy, you know, get your business name out there and fill up that schedule. Uh, something that you can easily do if you're using Instagram, because not only is it just this free platform where you can share your work with people, you can use it, you, you know, there's Booksy and you can use that right on your page to get booked right then and there. Nobody has to call you. You don't have to get any text messages. You know, the old school methods of um, having a receptionist. You've got Booksy, you don't really need that anymore. So that's, you know, plugging in Booksy into your Instagram is also a game changer. So I think the focus here is using Instagram to build up your business in the to the point where you are booked, you're full, you're happy with, you know, or finding those clients. You want clients to be able to find you using Instagram besides just the traditional methods of, you know, marketing through your website or marketing through Yelp or, or just relying on word of mouth because those are all great things, but Instagram can take you to the next level. So I have outlined a couple really simple things that I wanted to share with you all to try and help you make it easier for yourself and, and kind of like just focus in on these three areas of uh, these tactics that are simple, 
easy and are not going to like make you go crazy because you're overwhelmed by I need to, you know, create all this really super curated content or I need to post like tons of stuff. You don't have to do that. You really just need to focus on a couple of areas. So I'm going to quickly highlight those and then we'll get into them. So the first thing, the first area of focus, if you want to be found, if you want people to get a feel for your business and um, understand who you are, why they should follow you, why they should book you is your bio. What do you have in your bio? So that's the first thing I want to talk about, your bio. The second thing I want to talk about is your consistency and your presence on Instagram. I know we're busy. Everybody is. Um, if you're not super familiar with Instagram, it can feel a little bit overwhelming to even use the app if you don't know what exactly to post. But consistency in not, not just like you need to stick to this really, um, uh -oh. oh, okay. So not that you need to stick to- Just the reference. <laughs> sure. So not that you need to stick to a like really strict regimen of a posting schedule or things like that, but consistency is that you're taking the time out just once a day to get on there, put some content out, or even if you don't have anything to post that day, you are engaging on the platform because that's what Instagram, at this point, that's what they want from everybody. They want you on there, you know, that's a whole other subject of why they want you on there, but they want you on there. They want to give you content and they want to give other people content. So it's, it's about um, your consistency of being on the app and adding to it and engaging on the app. And the next thing is, the third thing is qu making quality content. It doesn't have to be difficult. It can, you know, there's really simple things you can do to just elevate what you're putting out there. So that's the third thing that we're going to talk about is your content. So at this point, um, we can get into everything or I also just wanted to see if there was any questions, if anybody had anything, you know, specific other than that, that they wanted to, to ask me at this point. Absolutely. There we go. Absolutely. Um, so first of all, we've had several hellos. It looks like we are rather transcontinental at this moment. We've got um, Orlando, Canada, but actually Swiss based, uh, Indiana, Ohio, Texas, Oregon, California. So we've got a, a very wide range of folks here. And it looks like people are seeing where to drop things in the chat, but you'll see me dropping things in throughout. And if you have any questions for Mia as we go, Massachusetts, hello. Um, if, if you have any questions for Mia as we go, or if Mia asks a question and you want to drop your answer, your responses, anything like that, you can drop them right here. You'll see the word here for me, and that's where you can drop anything like that, and we'll bring these in as we go. So as we're getting started, is there anything in what Mia just brought up around profile, around consistency, around anything like that, that anyone has like a burning question before we get going? Otherwise, we will launch right in. And also, hello, Tennessee. <laughs> All right, I see a couple people typing, so. Okay. Uh, not a question though. Oh, Marilyn, hello. Hello. Yeah, Aisha, go ahead, absolutely. And then we'll kick in and don't worry, I will keep track of all of your questions as we go and we will be getting them answered. So just so you know, um, we're looking for that question from Aisha and then we will continue moving forward. Ah, so at, Melanie asks a, a very good question that I think will come up in your consistency section. Do you have a tool that you use in terms of consistency that that will I, I'm, I'm assuming this is for automated posting. Melanie, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but do you go the route of using a tool for automating your posting consistency? So I don't. Um, I have just kind of gotten to a habit of where I spent I carve out time like I said, I'm not like a really like regimented, like strict person with myself in pretty much all areas of my life. So what I do is I pretty much wake up in the morning, coffee first, because I'm not doing anything until I have that. And then I, you know, a lot of people just 
I think it's a habit for everybody or not everybody, but a lot of people already is that you're getting on Instagram and you're scrolling, you're looking at whatever's going on in the world and with your friends. But that's the time that I take and I usually do it in the morning because I know I'm going to be active on there. So I will look at my um, work that I have in my folders on my phone. I make sure that I will get into that, but I make sure that I'm taking photographs and that I'm storing and saving content on my phone. So I have stuff that's ready to go for usually the following day. Sometimes I will do it in the evening, like after dinner time, when I know people are also, you know, scrolling, digesting their food, whatnot. So uh, I'm on the West Coast. So for me, that's dinner time in the evening. Um, so yeah, I don't really, I don't have an app. For that, I just I I just do it. I I do it in the morning or I do it in the evening because I know those are the times that a lot of people are on the platform and that I'm on there naturally. So I just integrate it in that sense. I know there are apps out there, but I just I'm just not familiar with them. I hope that answers or helps a little bit. Uh, it looks like it does, at least so far. If you have follow-ups, go ahead and drop them in. Um, here is a great question. I think this is something that a lot of us wrestle with. Um, Valekia wonders, is it wise to put personal posts so they can feel connected to you? That's a really, really good question. And that's something that I have thought about a lot in the past because we all have stuff going on in our lives. And sometimes it feels like, you want to share what's going on in your world. And I think some of that is, is great. It's totally fine. Um, I have a child. So once in a while, I will, you know, post a picture of her. I have a dog. I have things like that. But I, for the most part, I keep it pretty professional. I think that if there's a way you can connect to clients through perhaps, you know, sharing about, maybe your struggles at work or, you know, issues that you're having related to nails or things like that, like honesty there and asking questions about that, that would be semi-personal or a little bit more, you know, not just um, your straightforward nail post. I just, I, I keep it professional. I post my nail work and then I sprinkle in here and there little tidbits about my life. For me, I'm I'm a pretty private person, so it doesn't, I just don't do a lot of personal posts. And I also know that people are coming to my page to look for nail inspiration. They want to see your work. Plus, customers want to, you know, look at your online portfolio and, and find content that's speaking to them. And maybe some of that is personal, but I would stay away from getting things that are going to like rile people up. So politics, you know, super crazy stuff that's going on in the world. I feel like that's something that I stay away from and that's worked for me. We have people chiming yes, in. Yes, definitely. Yes, sprinkle absolutely. In there. I think if you want to, what I do, because I like humor. On the, on the outside, I'm very professional and, you know, <laughs> people might think I'm pretty reserved, but on, um, you know, the other side of me, the not professional and like me, I like a lot of humor. I like crude humor. I like, you know, the stuff that my friends are sending me in my, in my DMs, we're laughing our butts off. But um, I think stories are a really good place for if you want to share something that you that was funny or something that's made a little bit more you know less professional i would keep it clean still but that's, i think stories are a good place for putting a little bit more like if you want to ask questions and talk about subjects like stories are a really good place to put little uh, other parts of your life and personal information on because those kind of go away Absolutely. We have, oh, uh, that's okay. Uh, we have one more question um, from Islam Yate, and then we will go on and we'll keep doing questions as we go. We have a question 
uh, right now that is being asked about what if you don't have content to post in terms of your actual clients? What if you have lack of clients? Mm -hmm. In that case, do you post your practice work? And then what 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 if you feel that your practice work maybe isn't good enough yet? Should you still go for that just so that you're you're yes. maintaining that cadence? Absolutely. So I I started out post practice work. It it took me like an entire day to scroll to the bottom of my feed because I have like you know three thousand posts on there. But if you go back in time. I was posting practice work. I was, I'm, I have stuff on there that I'm like, I can't even believe I posted that, but I did. And it's still, you know, it, it kept the movement. It was momentum. It kept me going. And it's fun to look back on some of your old stuff and kind of reminisce. But yeah, I think whatever you got, it's, it's okay to, you know, don't overthink it too much. Also, you know, there's there's also areas that I'm going to talk about where it's um, where we're going to talk about like the quality of your pictures. So I would say like if you don't have some amazing client work that you want to share, it's totally fine to post your practice work or you know really nice cool shots, maybe some products that you have. You know, if you've got glitters or something like that, like some beautiful photos of that. And sometimes if you have nothing to share, it's okay to share other people's work as, you know, like something that you love, something that'll resonate with other people. Throwing out the caveat, please make sure to always tag whenever you're tag sharing anyone else's. Tag the artist. Tag them, tag them, tag them. Tag them. Yes. For sure. All right, perfect. So that is, that's all the questions that we've had so far. So many thank yous um, mm -hmm. in the chat. So that was really, really helpful. It looks like that was exactly what people needed to know. So I think we are good to move forward. Okay. So um, yes, area one that I was going to talk about is your bio. So if you're looking at Instagram and you find a page that you click on, which is what you're hoping that people are going to do with your page, they want to see who you are. First of all, your name. I've come across accounts that I don't really understand. You know, if there's no name there, I'm like, who is this person? Is this a person or is this like an inspiration account? Is this an entire salon page, whatnot? So, or to, and also just to add the touch of you're a human being and this is my name. So I would start with me, make sure that's there what you do. My bio has, I'm a nail artist. That's what I do. Um, your location, you want people to quickly be able to read your bio and figure out where you're at. Mine is a little different because mine says Sparkle SF. And I suppose for me that made sense because that's San Francisco. That's where I'm at. Uh, mine's a little bit different as well because I have some of like my accomplish, uh, accomplishments on there. I don't have my booking info on there because I'm not taking new clients at this time, but if I was, it would be on there. So your name, your location, your booking info, what you do, and how do people get in touch with you? How do they book you? So that's the booksy part or however you're booking at this point, like DM, whatever. You want to have people be able to uh, figure out how to get a hold of you, book you, what you do. Also, if you have specialties, say you're like really into um, Japanese nail art or you are, um, you know, you do everything by hand or, you know, you're a, a glitter queen or whatever it is that you feel like is your specialty. Maybe you have a couple of them. You can kind of sprinkle that in there as well. So people can look at your bio and say, okay, so this is, you know, Sarah from Utah, who is a nail tech or a nail artist. And this is how we book her. And this is what she does. These are her specialties. It's a little bit easier for people to understand just at a quick glance. This is a professional. This is what she does. This is how I get a hold of her. Uh, you know, it's, and you're a real person. So by fashion. <laughs> first thing I wanted to talk about was the bio. Um, 
the second part, which I think is probably one of the most important things that we touched on a little bit before is your consistency. So, um, like I said, I'm not talking about setting alarm clocks and, you know, sticking to a super, super regimented routine where you are automating your post or um, doing things that add extra steps. It's just making that time to post. My method is either morning or evening, sometimes both if I'm feeling crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, making that time to post content. So my, what I do is I usually try to post one nail pick a day, uh, one to three stories per day. And I'm honestly, I haven't quite figured out, figured out all the real stuff at this point, but I'm dabbling in that and I'm getting to it. And my goal right now is one time per week. Now, I don't sit down at the end of the week and go over a checklist and say, okay, I posted one. I made sure I did this, this, and this, but you just need to work it into your routine. You need to make that time. And it's not a lot of time. You really don't have to overthink it. And I think a lot of overthinking comes from questioning your work. Are people going to like this? Is it good enough? And I would not worry about that at this point. We'll talk about your quality, the quality content, which comes into play with being able to have content to post. Um, but you don't, you really don't have to overthink what, you know, you don't need highly curated photographs that took a production to create or videos. They can be simple. What I do every day at work, um, assuming that you're taking clients or maybe you're just working friends or family at this point, is I make sure that I'm taking a variety of photos. And we'll talk about hands and lighting and all that stuff when we get into the quality section. But you wanna make sure that you're taking those few minutes after your, the nails are done to just snap some photos, take a quick, Take a quick video over your client's hands. Just spend a few minutes. So at the end of the day or the next morning, you have, you look through your phone, your photo album, you pick out your best work from that day, your favorite. And that's what I choose. Stories are a little bit different because I think you have more room for, um, more adding more con I, stories sometimes i'm like oh, okay I'm, i might just have one story to post that day uh or maybe i might have five i don't know i feel like people don't it's for it, there's just less involved with stories it's just kind of like here's a photo i don't even really have to put a caption if i don't want to i can tag you know whoever's nails i did or if it's an inspiration photo or even something that I just appreciated, you know, that goes into like your personal life or another account that you enjoy, just tag that and just, you know, that's part of being consistent. Just keeping a cadence of regularly engaging with the app because like I said before, Instagram wants you on the platform. They want you to be on there and I'm not going to, I can't guarantee that your post will be seen just because you're on there, but it will help. And that's, you know, partially due to just the fact that you're on there. But um, even if, you know, hundreds or, or thousands of people aren't seeing your post, there could be that one person that does that saves it, which also somehow kind of like builds you some credibility credibility into the algorithm <laughs> um, saving people saving your posts as inspiration or something that they want to um, send to a friend or bring to their own nail tech if it's not you you know bring a photo of that of your work to somebody else to share it so that's what i would you know that's that's all part of engagement is uh getting on there 
have, you know, getting your photos on there, your short videos, posting your best work, not over. I think when I first started out, I mean, it kind of worked for me at that time, but it wasn't, <laughs> it's not something I would do now. It was, I was an over poster. Say I was doing, you know, six clients a day, which I don't do anymore because I would be dead by now. <laughs> at this point, I only take about four people a day because my sets are long. They're whatever. It takes a long time. Uh, I don't have the stamina for that anymore or the time, but I'm taking uh, those photos and uh, I'm, I'm pulling out my favorite and that's what I'm using. I'm not overthinking it. Um, I'm going to take a quick yeah. minute before we before we move on. So I just dropped in the chat. So if you have any questions from what you've been hearing so far, this is a great time to, to drop them in the chat. And I'm also dropping a link because Mia called out specifically the um, the anxiety that there can be around like reels or around whenever there's that new trend that's like, oh, good, I get to learn something new. Um, so if that's something that that is not your all time favorite thing to make ever, which uh, for many of us, I think maybe it's not. I've just dropped the link in the chat for upcoming education webinars here at Booksy. So our focus um, this quarter, our focus January through March is really on this Instagram and social media marketing. And then come April, May, June, you're going to be seeing a lot of new webinars from us around branding and really branding yourself and branding your profiles online. So you're going to see content on creating reels, on creating really stellar portfolio photos where we're going to hone in on, on some of the things that Mia is actually talking about today. So just wanted to let everyone know to kind of like put a little pin in the fact that that's coming up and then stay tuned because a little bit later in our webinar, I'm going to tell you about a very big nails event that is going to be coming up um, at the end of March with Mia and some of our biggest nail ambassadors. So just, just keep, keep a little pin in that. And then also if you have any questions for Mia as you go along, I know this is like all brilliant so far, but if anything occurs to you, drop them in and we will bring them up. So, okay, let's keep going. Okay. I wanted to, uh, ask you under the, the area of being consistent and talking about engagement and being on the platform and using it. So, um, besides just posting your photos and, and videos and reels and things like that, it's engagement with other accounts as well. It's, it's important to, besides just, you, you know, living on your own page and being completely tunnel visioned on your own work, get out there and explore other people's work. Um, comment, like, save, and you don't have to do it to everybody, but do it, you know? Don't be afraid to ask other nail techs questions too, or even ask your, you know, whoever your followers are, what, you know, if they have, um, if they, like if they have questions for you or what do you think of this? Do you like this better or this better? Like, don't be afraid to ask questions and reaching out to other nail techs. Like I still do it, you know, um, there's people, if I see something that somebody did and I love it, like I give them their flowers, you know, I'm like, I, I'm all about, um, sharing love with other people on the app and letting them know I appreciate what they did and not just like a heart, but like, wow, you know, your line work here is beautiful or whatnot. And it doesn't have to be distinctly within your industry. I do it to things that kind of are in the realm of the beauty world, hair, makeup, and then even a little bit outside of that. Like, I love plants. I'm a crazy plant person. Things that are all kind of like aesthetic. For me, it's all about aesthetics and living a uh, living in a home and a space that I love. So I follow and comment and engage with, you know, home decor, artists, pets. That's another big one. <laughs> I posted a picture of a dog kind of just as like a fun, like sprinkle of something that is not personal for me, but something I also enjoy. I have a French bulldog, but I posted like a random dog that I saw. Uh, there it is, that one, yeah. I got way more traction on that post than like anything I've posted in a long time. 
So <laughs> something to think about is, you know, it's a neutral kind of post. I think maybe there's a couple people on there that were like, ah, don't buy dogs or whatever. But for the most part, it was, it was positive. Everybody was like, oh my God, so cute. Yay, whatever. That's engagement too. So yeah, interacting, engaging with other accounts, asking questions, asking your um, followers or your client base questions. It's all part of the same world of uh, engagement, not just posting. So that's what I would say about engagement. Uh, like I said, I'm not strict. I stick to the normal times where I would be aimlessly floating through the app, looking at, I don't even know what. Uh, I use some of that time to take my best work. One post a day, couple real, not reels, sorry, couple stories, uh, maybe a reel. Right now, I'm at about one reel a week. As I get better at that, and I'm trying to remind myself of what I'm telling you is to not be afraid to post stuff and just like kind of start using it because if you don't start using it, you're not going to learn it. You have to just kind of just start doing it. And over time, then you get comfortable and you start learning about it. And that will create some growth that you, a little, you know, maybe higher up on the, in the algorithm. <laughs> and, uh, hopefully get you booked because that's what we're, we're looking for. Absolutely. Okay. couple things from our chat. Um, so Bria says, will a replay be available? Yes, Bria. I'm about to drop a link in the chat for you right now. Um, a replay of this webinar will be available. It will go up on the Booksy YouTube page. You can find this and, and um, many of our past educational webinars on the Booksy YouTube page. So it'll be right there. And then Melanie is wondering a question about to go back to, to specifically the subject of bios. Melanie says, so in the bio, do you need to give your name? Um, she says, I, myself, I'm known as Mel, not Melanie. And then should I put my last name too? I just put my first name on there. Um, I don't think you have to put your last name on there. I think that's not necessary at this point. Um, for my first thought would be like, okay, do I really want this person? Do I want the world to just start like Googling me? <laughs> do I want to know my address? You know, all that stuff is out there. So no, I would, you know, you can put your name and then maybe in parentheses, like your nickname or what you want to be called. But definitely it, it doesn't have to be both. And maybe it's just Mel. Maybe it's just what you want to be referred to as. Definitely some name though. Not no last name, <laughs> unless you want to. I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in on that and agree as well because of course you know keeping yourself safe online is just as important as you know if grow, growing clientele and all of that that's that's important obviously for for all of us from a professional perspective but yeah. keeping yourself safe is that most important thing and Mia mentioned this earlier but I'm gonna tag it on mention it again this is where um, if you are working with an app like you know, like Booksy, just saying, uh, hashtag just saying. But if you're working with an app like Booksy, um, with Booksy, you can actually put that book now button right in your bio so that, and you, you don't see it on Mia's page because we're looking at it as a desktop. And again, Mia's books are full. So she does not, she specifically does not have a book now. But if we were looking at a, a Booksy page profile that was on a phone, we'd see that book now that so many of us are familiar with. And that way you don't have to be having those conversations in DM and be anxious about who the person is. They are going to be having that account. You are going to be having your account and they'll be able to communicate with you through there. And you've got that extra layer of protection. So I'm just going to throw that out there again, because it really does make a difference. And in a moment, um, I, I'm going to hand the, the mic back over to Mia and I'm going to drop Mia's link in the chat again, because if you are not a current Booksy subscriber and you are interested in trying Booksy and seeing what you think, we have a, an offer where you can try it through Mia right now. And again, I'll drop the link in the bio and you can explore and see why so many people um, really find that they can grow as professionals by having all of their accounts connected this way. So back to you, Mia, and I will drop that link for all of you. Okay. So we were talking about consistency and engagement. I think we covered um, enough about that, but just to like close it out, 
um, one of the points I wanted to make was that it, you know, you don't have to put a lot of pressure on yourself to do it. You just kind of need to work it into the times of day where you would be naturally on the app. And the next, the next point that I wanted to get into was making sure you know, your quality content, making sure that you have stuff to add, that you have stuff to post content. So what I mean by quality content is pictures and images of your work that are clear. Uh, they are, they're on a clean background. They uh, have really good lighting and then your hand poses. So, and also something that can help with I, I think a lot of people these days are using like a lot of different apps and that just adds extra steps like editing apps, stuff like that. That's great if you want to spend the time doing that, but I don't, I will maybe use an app once in a while. Like if a client has like, I've got some people that bite their um, cuticles and once in a while there'll be somebody who was like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I had a really bad week at work. So, you know, my, my cuticles are all messed up and I'm like, I know, I know you're stressed. I know this is, I know my clients now, so I can tell. But what I'll do after is, um, for situations like that, I will, like if they have got like, kind of like a scab or something that's like not really that great to look at. I do use one app, let me look it up really quick because I didn't write it down. It's called, it's just called Photo Editor. Um, let me see if I can show it to you really quick. Let me zoom in. I don't know if you can see it. It's that one right there. Photo editor. It's easy. It's free. And um, it has this little tool called blemish and blur. Those are pretty much the only parts of it that I use because if I do blemish on that like picked hangnail or like little scab uh, or whatever it is, if you know their cat scratched them on their hand or something like that, that those are things that are distracting in pictures that I don't think I want to have in my photos. And most people don't want to see it. So I will use it for that. But I don't like to rely on apps because it's too many steps. I just want to keep it, I want to keep it simple. So you want to make sure that you're taking photos that don't need a lot of editing in the end. So your lighting, I use, oh, I believe it's by the daylight company and it's just like a slimline desk lamp. I use it for my workspace and I use it for taking my nail photos. So I just have it on my desk and I kind of play with it and tilt it to get like, I can tell when it's on the nails, like you want, my nails are matte right now, so I can't really give you a good example, but you want your line of light when you're playing with your lighting to kind of be either centered or not there. So when your line of light is on your nail or when the light is on the nail, it's gonna show any imperfections or like if you, you know, you want to do, you know, of course, a, a, an excellent finishing and filing job to where you're not going to have lumps and bumps. But say you put on like some nail charms or decals or whatever, like those are going to kind of like warp your line of light. So I'd like to play with my lighting so it doesn't show like weird distractions and lines of light on my nails or on my customer's nails. So playing with your lighting to make sure that it's not making things look funky uh, and that it's bright enough, your background clean, no nail dust, no funky old towels, even if it's just a sheet of white paper or the back of your nail table that doesn't have a lot of junk on it, no dirt, nobody wants to see that, it just needs to be clean. And, um, I've, I've played around with different backgrounds like over the years, but I always make sure that it kind of ties into my overall brand and aesthetic. So 
I think currently right now, it's just like a very neutral gray. So if you go to my page, my, um, my backgrounds are usually always like pastels because my logo is the pastel colors. Um, if you, yeah, in my bio, you can see my like brand logo. It's like soft pinks. It's some teal. There's some lavender in there. So those are the kind of colors that I stick to for my backgrounds. You don't have to use color, but um, if you do, I would stick to something that speaks, that kind of aligns with your brand or how you, um, your aesthetic. So that's what I would say about backgrounds. Clean, <laughs> um, not distracting. I know there was like kind of, I don't know, people might still be doing it, but I don't do it and I never really, uh, so that you're going past one that I was gonna say, that was a reel, that's why it has a crazy heart background. Normally my backgrounds don't look like that, but that was a reel that I added like a little Valentine's Day effect to. But um, yeah, uh, there was a period of time and I think some salons might do it and I don't, I never, I don't encourage you to do it is using those backgrounds that have like tons of like your logo on it or like salon logo or your brand name on it. Like, I think that's, if it's working for you, that's fine. But if you're new and want us to start getting like some consistent quality photos, don't worry about getting like this placemat or thing printed that's got all your, uh, your branding on there because to me and you might feel different I think it's distracting from the nails I think what you want to show is the beautiful work that you just created and not I don't know maybe it's just a like sensory thing for me but it's just too much I'm actually going to briefly tag in on that because um one of the things that that I help with here at Booksy is our social media cadence across our various platforms. And if we are looking at resharing, like if we're looking at, um, we're gonna reshare a nails post, do we wanna do Mia? Do we wanna do this person? Do we wanna do this person? We are almost definitely going to choose the one that doesn't have that logo on it so that the focus can be on the art. And of course, in anything that we post, we're gonna say, this is super fly nails and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But um, as, as the larger pages and as the company pages, if you're trying to get attention in that direction, I will absolutely second that if you're going to put your logo or anything on there, have it be very small, but this very clean that Mia's talking about from a brand perspective, that's what we're interested in being able to share because it mm -hmm. really, it, you, the, your eyes go straight to those hearts, straight to those, <laughs> straight to those flowers. And yeah. that's the content that we find engaging. Yeah. Yes. Um, Occasionally, I will add in like a little, um, I'm an ambassador for a nail company. And when I, since I'm on a contract with them, when I do use their products, I will put like a little um, emblem, like their logo at the bottom of my picture. But I don't, I'm, I'm talking about the backgrounds here, like those crazy, you know, I'm not, I'm not even going to say crazy because for some people it works and I'm not trying to disrespect anybody that uses them. But if you're new and starting out and you want to just, let's just keep it simple, clean, focus on your lighting, focus on actually doing really nice cuticle work. So you're not having like crusty looking cuticles and that plays into like something that you should Another topic is, you know, your the, the services that you're performing and taking care of clients' cuticles and the prep work and things like that. But that's another subject. But that's something that you want to make sure you're doing, so it doesn't sh it doesn't take away and it doesn't look sloppy in your photos. So moisturizer on your hand on your client's hands. No dry hands. No dry hands club. So lotion. Uh, we always use cuticle oil as well, but it can leave you looking super greasy and take away. It can just create too much uh, oil reflection or glare in the photos. So I tend to have people moisturized, cuticle oil, and then I wipe down uh, their nails again with a, a lint-free wipe. 
and maybe a little bit of alcohol again, just to kind of remove the excess or send them to, I, I just hate removing all that oil once it's on there. So I don't like to send them to the sink and wash again, but some people prefer that. Some people don't want a ton of grease just sitting on their hands. So they let it sit there for a minute and then they go wash. Either way, it's fine. You just don't want to have it be overkill. So that's part of uh, your quality content. So um, yeah. Uh, is there any questions about captions? Because that also feeds, it's part of content because you're, um, you know, it's your work and then it's what you're saying about it. And I just wasn't sure how much, if anybody wanted to talk about captions. We don't have any yet. I will shout out to you if we do. I do see a question about for you. Per, oh, goodness. Now people are jumping in fast. Um, okay. So a question about um, for you personally, do you watermark your content? And that's from Bria. And then Nicole says, I never know what to say in captions. And Melanie says, yes. Okay. So I know that we're going to talk poses, but it sounds like a yes. But that okay. quick question from Bria, for you personally, do you watermark your content? I don't. Um, earlier on in my career, I did watermark my content but personally it's just not really a concern for me to uh have my stuff watermarked if it's out there it's kind of out there and i i mean i don't i'm relying on blind faith that people will um not steal my content and also tag me if they're using it so i don't and also it it goes back into what Julia what you were talking about was um, brands don't want to use like if you're ever looking to get reposted by um, a publication or like refinery or allure or whatever Cosmo all those things have that have an online presence that have major accounts they do do like nail roundups or you know nail trends and stuff like that and they don't like I've been approached before when I had um like my a watermark on or the brand the the nail company i was using they asked me if i had a photo without that on there so i don't know i just don't i don't i don't use uh watermarks i don't think unless you're really worried about um people taking your content and doing stuff you don't want them to do with it i wouldn't i wouldn't worry about it it just to me it adds another step and I'm all about simplicity. Perfect. It looks like that answered that well. So in our last um, about seven minutes here, and thank you everyone for all of these phenomenal comments and questions. These are astounding. Um, so we've still got to talk about hand poses and we've got to talk oh, about yes. captions. Yes, hand no poses. worries. Okay, let's, let's that. quickly, as part of the quality content, your hand poses. So I made a post on Instagram earlier this week um about different hand poses so i've got a couple outlined that uh, this goes into your consistency and your quality content is how you're posing your hands so i i think it's just keep it simple like this first one here is the stack it's a, just a very tight shot with good lighting the hands are, you know, the fingers are close together. And that's something I want to point out to people is that for some reason on camera, spread apart fingers in photos just do not look good. It's weird. I don't know. Unless you're like a supermodel with these amazing and a photographer and all that stuff. Hands together, hands together. And I, in all your poses, whatever you're doing, like kind of your fingers together is what I mean. Space between them just doesn't photograph well. My go-to pose is the stack. It's easy. Put one hand on top of the other. Make sure that uh, all of the nails are showing like you're not overlapping. It's easy. Your clients can pretty much follow those instructions pretty well. So there's the stack. And then we have the next one, which is the triangle. So I like this one because it kind of gets the thumbs in there. And it's also, I like tight shots that are kind of zoomed in just on the nails. I don't like to see too much finger, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's, it's, it's about the nails, not 
necessarily the people's fingers and knuckles, which can just look kind of odd sometimes. So this one's called the triangle. It's just kind of telling people to put their hands flat on the table. Go, you, it's like an overhead shot. And uh, you get all 10 nails in there typically. You're not gonna see the thumb super well, but versus the stack, you don't see the thumbs at all, but I love the triangle. That's my second go-to pose. So quick question from the chat on all of these poses. Are your client's hands completely rested on the table or are they slightly raised? They're rested. Unless, I mean, there's some instances in the, in the stack where I might have them like rotate their hands like a little bit, but as a rule of thumb, flat on the table. The floating nails, I really love this one too. This one, um, it's almost like the triangle, but you're just having your clients put their hands just kind of at an angle where you can get another tight shot. And by tight, I mean like really just focused in on the nail and the nail art. That's what we wanna see. I don't, yeah, not a lot of finger. And this one, this one, the lighting is pretty easy to manipulate. Like, I feel like I can always get like a good, like less shadowy and less um, kind of lines of light all over the nail. I, I just, I really like this one. This is my third favorite. And then the underhand. This is another one where uh, <laughs> I don't use this one a ton, but it's another one. This is like, that's in the rotation. So it's when people just flip their, it's, it's a, some, this is the more awkward of poses for people. So I have clients that are kind of like, am I doing it right? And I reach out and I mess with their fingers. I adjust them until it looks good to me. And the, the nails are kind of like lined up. It's a great way of just like for this type of nail art, like it's uh, the same all across the board. So it looks really nice to have the nails just flow in that manner. It just, I, I like this one too. So those are my four favorites, but my, my go-tos are the stack and the triangle for the easiest. And then you can play around with the floating and the, the underhand, but if you're confused, I would just, or, or not confused, but just kind of like starting out and don't wanna, um, spend too much time thinking about how, to, how should people pose their hands, you won't just remember to, you know, to have them, uh, the fingers together and that there's, you know, there's not space between them and that, uh, your lighting is good. The nails are moisturized and, uh, yeah, it's pretty simple, not too much finger for me. That's what's worked for me. Perfect. So I know for everyone on here, you've been incredibly generous with your time. We can stay on for a few extra minutes so that Mia can still answer that captions question. And if you have to go, don't worry. As we said earlier, this webinar in its uh, complete form will be on the Booksy YouTube page and all the links that we've dropped in the chat, you will be able to find those links even when the webinar is done. Those links will still be in the chat. And before we go to that final subject on captions, I do just want to let you know one quick thing, because if all of this has just been fantastic, like mind blowing information to you, which it has been for me. So I'm sure it has for everyone else too. Thank you. We want to let you, oh, thank you. Believe me from all of us. Thank you, Mia. But um, from on behalf of Booksy, we want to let everyone know, Booksy has a big, 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 brand new virtual nail event that's coming at the end of March, which will have the opportunity to learn and connect with Naja Nail Guru, with Jenny Bowie and with Spiffster. So some really just amazing heavy hitters in our Booksy community and in the nail art community as well. And Mia will also be participating during the event. So if you are enjoying today's webinar, if you are getting something out of this, if you are finding this useful, like I see Carmen is, like some of you have said that you are, which is awesome, please plan on attending. Make sure that you save that date, March 28th, and you will be able to find more information on the Booksy Biz Instagram page and as well as on our educators page. So again, that's Naja Nail Guru, that's Jenny Bowie, that's Spifster, and Mia will be there as well. So we're still going to answer that final question on captions. I just wanted to let everyone know about that. And we sure look forward to seeing you there. So, okay. With that being said, take it away. Take us home with captions. Okay. So captions 
uh, again, goes back to my keep it simple um, kind of theory on things is I keep them pretty short. I like to, uh, I, I, and I like to make them fun too at the same time. So sometimes I give my nails like a name, you know, it's like, this is the, you know, the Valentine's day explosion special or something, you know, there's something that's fun or funny or whatever, like little pieces of my personality come out there and maybe it might catch someone's eye, but I keep them simple. I say, I usually just kind of give a brief description of the nails, just not like, boom, here's nails. I hope you enjoy. It's like, I want to say something. So whether it's, um, here's a set I did on and if the client wants me or is okay with me tagging them, I will tag them or I'll just call them by their name. Uh, we used, you know, XYZ product and I love the results and I hope you do too, or something like that. Like it doesn't, one thing I do think in captions is that people do like reading about what you used and it doesn't have to be like super scientific and like I use this bonder and this primer and this prep and all this stuff just kind of, you know, I used my, this gorgeous gel that I just got from XYZ company. It's this amazing red, you know, don't you love it or something. Just add a little bit more than just nails, you know? Maybe a name for your nail set. Maybe your client's name. Maybe the pro some of the products you used or the glitter or something like that. Um, and then add in a couple hashtags. One thing I re I'm not saying, you know, I don't like the, when I see like a, a chunk of hashtags that this that's this big, I don't, maybe that works for some people, but I think that's a lot of time and too much. So keep your hashtags simple. I usually use like the top ones and then add in some like trending or seasonal ones. Like right now, if I'm doing Valentine's Day nails, I know that people are out there looking for Valentine's Day nail ideas. So I'm going to hashtag Valentine's nails, Valentine's Day nails. Look at what, what the, you know, Instagram will, when you start typing in the hashtag, it kind of starts showing you what people are actually following uh, on hashtags. So I do them kind of, um, seasonally or whatever the kind of like moment in time is I use those as well so if it's you know lunar new year or valentine's day christmas halloween whatnot and then um if there's any brands or things like that that you want to hashtag your you know hashtag nails or if you have a specialty hashtag your specialty there gel nail artist natural nail artist uh, natural nails, things like that, that are, that think about what people are going to be looking for, because that's what hashtags are for. It's for people to be able to be able to filter through content to find what they're looking for. So what are they looking for right now? Just kind of explore that idea when you're using your hashtags. So simple captions, a little bit fun. Uh, not too long and just use hashtags, but be smart about them too. So one final question in the chat, um, and this, this sort of, I think, connects to this captions conversation around, do you think it's more important to specialize when you're starting out or to be a Jane of all trades? And then obviously, how are you going to make sure that that's connected in your captions in terms of um, people being able to find you? Um, when you're first starting out, I don't, I think you're still kind of figuring out what your specialty is. So you kind of are a jack of all trades for a point in time, unless you get in to this world, knowing already what you want to focus on. When I started, I was doing everything. I was doing acrylic. I was doing gel. I was doing extensions. I was doing forms. I was doing whatever, what I was learning so much. So I was trying everything, but at this point, if you do have a specialty, yeah, like you lean into that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you don't have to, but yeah, you don't have to be a jack of all trades forever. It's not, I mean, if you like that, but a specialty is a great thing to have.
I'm a gel specialist. That's what I, that's pretty much all I use. Perfect. Well, this has been just absolutely brilliant. Um, I hope you all have been taking tons of notes. I certainly have. And again, if, 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 if you sign out of this webinar and you're going, oh my God, she said something about captions right at the end and I can't remember what it was, you will be able to find this webinar in the next couple of days on the Booksy YouTube page. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Maria. everybody. Thank you so much. And then if you know, if there's something that you didn't get a chance to ask on here, I am. I do check my messages. Like I said, when I'm in my like daily routine of going on IG for a little bit, I do check my messages. So if there's something that you wanted to ask me, I'm available and I'm around to help when I can. So feel free. And that's what I would say about, you know, um, doing that with other nail artists too. Like ask them questions. It doesn't hurt. All they can, um, the worst that can happen is that they don't answer. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. Stay tuned to the Booksy webinars for more upcoming webinars on branding. Stay tuned to the Booksy Instagram for upcoming big events at the end of March where we are going to see Mia again. And of course, if you're not yet, oh my God, what are you doing? Go follow Mia. As soon as we are done, go follow Superfly Nails, your Instagram. Thank feed. you, everybody. Well, thank I hope you. It was helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mia. Okay. Bye-bye.